welcome to Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, uh, actually, you're drinking a tasty beverage over there, Sean. What, uh, what is it? This is Pepsi, Andy. What percentage is it? That's uh, 14% carbohydrates. <laughs> How about you? What are you drinking today? I'm drinking a tasty uh, uh, can of uh, Nesty Zero. Yeah, what's the percentage on that? That's uh, 1% uh, sodium. Excellent. All right. Cheers. On, cheers. On with the show. Mm -hmm. um, today on the show, we're going to show you uh, how to add memory to your computer. It may sound like a very fundamental and simple thing to do, but there are a lot of pitfalls when it comes to adding memory, and yet it's one of the most powerful upgrade tools that you can have to turn an old computer into a newer, newish, better less obsolete computer. Yeah, people talk all the time about upgrading their processor. In a lot of cases, you don't need to even think about that. All you have to do to really get a bunch of pep into your system again is add some memory. You know what? I mean, I've had kind of how many computers have I had over the years, and I've never upgraded the processor. It's, a, frankly, a waste of time, and uh, you know, really, there's not much point to it. Um, mm -hmm. Fundamentally, you're going to have one thing, you really, and maybe two things in the life of a computer that you really might, might want to upgrade that is easy to do, relatively speaking, and that is memory. Because typically what happens is you get a computer uh, that ships with a bunch of slots that are open uh, for memory and maybe one RAM chip that's in there. You know, when you buy a computer, very often the, uh, they're shipping you the lowest amount of memory that you can uh, buy to make the, the system affordable. And of course, as the years go by, a gig of RAM goes from being, you know, hundreds of dollars down to being, you know, 50 or 60 or 70, that sort of thing. So you'll be able to... Add, it, add more affordably. Right, and at the same time, the 128 megabytes of memory that seemed like so much when you got the system now does almost nothing thanks right. to the bloat of operating systems and all the requirements of all the software that you've added on since. Well, five years ago, you know, Windows XP came out, and the minimum specs on the Windows XP was 64 megs of RAM, which of course was foolish if you ran a system with that. Um, and we found out fundamentally you should be running 128 megabytes at a minimum, and uh, you did some tests, didn't you? Uh, we did. We did uh, when we were in the call for help lab. We did a bunch of tests on uh, the effect of doing a lot of different system upgrades, and uh, we found that memory, uh, adding memory, actually increased system performance. Uh, About thirty percent, I think it was. Thirty percent in in some cases. Right? Well, we went from one twenty eight to two fifty six. We instantly got a thirty percent increase in performance on boot and uh, in applications. I think it was a sort of a similar uh, similar type of uh, increase mm -hmm. in performance. Now, when you get over, a, you know, I think fundamentally these days you need 5, 12 megs of RAM to get Windows running, you know, to do all the things you want to do, like uh, photo editing, uh, maybe it's some basic video editing, uh, things like that, running multiple windows. Um, and then go to one gig or two gigs if you're serious about doing some heavy-duty photo editing, some heavy-duty video editing, and that sort of thing. Right. But let's get into how, how to add RAM. Let's, Sean, let's talk about what we have to do to, uh, to crack open our system and to, to add the chips that we need. Okay, well the first thing you need to do is uh, crack open the case and look through those tangle of wires and cables that you have in there. That can be in intimidating in and of itself. What you usually have right next to the processor, we've got that processor here, you've got a series of slots here where the RAM will, uh, will go into your system. Mm -hmm. This will typically be populated by one or two slots in your system. If you haven't gone in there, before, you might want to just take a look, see what you do have in there at this point, if you do have any free slots. Mm -hmm. Now, some systems uh, will ship with maybe two slots, and both of them are filled with smaller yeah. sticks. I discovered that the other day. I bought a low-end Dell recently, actually about a year ago. It's a 2.8 gigahertz machine. only has two slots. Right. And when I cracked open the, the case to, to look at how much expansion I had, I, they were, all the slots were filled. Right, and, and this is uh, one thing that you should probably do, is check your system specs. It might be looking at the motherboard manufacturer's uh, specs for the motherboard you have, or looking at the manufacturer's site to find out how much RAM you can actually fit into that. Now, there's a ton of different types of RAM out there, and uh, there's faster RAM, there's higher capacity RAM. Not all of it will fit in your system. You'll typically get a list of specifications that say what RAM comes in the system if you're buying one pre-configured from the manufacturer. Uh, Plus, you'll also see a thing that says maximum memory. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that's 256 and your maximum is 256, well, you're out of luck at that point. You know what? I, I actually cut through all this nonsense, and I figured out a way to, to figure this out very, very simply. Uh, I go to crucial.com. It's one of my favorite places to buy RAM. And essentially what you do, actually, I have it on my screen here, is uh, especially if you have a name brand computer and you know the make and model, all you've got to do is click on a manufacturer. Uh, and so my, let's say I have a Dell machine here, which I do. And I click Go. And uh, we're going to go go on down to the uh, Dimension series, which is um, the machine I have. And click Go again. It's literally three clicks to find it exactly what RAM you need. 
Uh, and I know that I have a 3000, uh, dimension 3000 series. So let's try that. And bingo, all of a sudden what you see on this site is uh, on the left hand side you'll see that you know the maximum memory designed for the system, um, standard memory installs that Dell provides uh, when you go and buy the machine in the first place, how many slots and or banks are in that machine. And in this particular case, as I said, I have two slots and it shows that there's actually two slots, one bank of two. Right. And when we talk about banks, some systems require that you install two identical types of you know, chips of RAM side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's called what? Does it have a special name? I don't think it has a special name, does it? Not, um, not that I can think of off the top of my eh, head. Whatever. It's just really you, you just have to pair them. Those are really old systems mm -hmm. and uh, some newer systems. But I, but I think that, but not very many these days. But I think some people, like if they have a system out there that's sort of a, a one and a half or two gigahertz machine, mm -hmm. chances are you might actually be running into this problem particularly. I know my dad, for example, has, uh, has a machine that's, uh, I think it's a 1.8 gigahertz machine, mm -hmm. and he has four slots, mm -hmm. and he has to install identical uh, RAM in, in slot one and three, and slot two and four. Oh, that's a different issue altogether. That's okay. something called dual channel memory. And uh, with that one, you, you don't necessarily have to with all motherboards. You can actually spread it around. You can put like 512 in one, 256 in another, a gig in another one, and it will all work okay. But uh, for maximum performance, you do want to pair them off. And this is actually a bit of a, a change from the very old systems. You have to pair them off beforehand in very old systems. Mm -hmm. But that would be like if you had four slots, it would be slots one and two. You'd have to pair them right. off. This is going I back to what, the, the sort of the Pentium 3 days? Um, even earlier, even. Even earlier, yeah. But yeah, you, you would have to create a circuit, I believe, through the two uh, slots and then oh, back so. out. So right. it wouldn't work with only one in there. But mostly not so anymore. No, not so anymore. And in the case of dual channel, you're actually, uh, so check with dual channel. Often cases, this motherboard doesn't have it, but often cases, you'll have one and three uh, slots uh, here uh, are in a different color, so they'll be blue to oh. indicate that they are paired off in that way in a dual channel configuration. Right. So you would put them into one and three or two and four. Oh, that's a good, that's a good little indicator. I didn't realize that that was possible. Yeah. And not all of them are like this. I believe this uh, motherboard is dual channel capable um, and it doesn't, it have, doesn't that. have that color marker. No. Right. And, and actually, the, the difference that you can get just by changing, if you, so let's just say you had a, two, a dual channel board and you had your RAM in slots one and two, you'll get okay performance. Move that one slot from two to three and it'll actually bump up again about 30%. It actually right. can be very substantial. So you can, I mean, you can use crucial.com to figure that out. It'll, it'll tell you if you need uh, dual channel memory. Uh, you can look in your motherboard, uh, the, the um, the spec sheet. The spec sheet, thank you. The, van, the manual comes with your motherboard or it can be downloadable from the maker of your computer or perhaps if it's an Intel board from intel.com, places like that. Um, now, any other issues we should be aware of? Yes, definitely uh, one issue that you should be aware of. There, there's a number of different types of memory and uh, again, the uh, crucial.com or kingston.com. Uh, you're a big fan of, of kingston.com, right? No, I like kingston, I like crucial. Um, a lot of memory is very much the same these days. You can get some really cheap memory. And that's one issue. If you have a no-name brand memory manufacturer and you have problems with your system afterwards, maybe the memory. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I like going with brand name with something as important as memory usually. Um, but uh, there's a, a lot of different types, and both of those sites should tell you whether you need um, the old style um, SD RAM, yeah. DDR, DDR2. It'll tell you what speed you need even. Different uh, motherboards will take different speeds. Oops. Right. And uh, I guess we'll be going to Crucial to replace that stick. <laughs> um, but uh, y you'll see that on the memory that you have typically. Um, this one doesn't say outright, but a lot of times it will say something like PC3200. Right. So that will indicate the speed and the type that you should order if you're going to order some more. Now one of the things is if, if you have, let's say, a stick of 3200 and you have another stick that's 2400 perhaps, is, mm -hmm. what, 2800, I'm not sure what the spec, the number's off the top of my head. But if the number is lower on a second stick, the problem is, is that it won't, the system won't run uh, if it's capable of running with 3200 um, uh, speed memory, then it won't run at 3200 because you have mixed speeds in your system. Right, and because that interacts with the processor, it'll claw the entire speed of your system down if you get RAM that's slower than your processor can handle and your motherboard can handle. Right. So it's a bit of a sticky uh, procedure. So, I mean, the idea being that, number one, uh, match the speed of your RAM. Number two, um, buy it from a reputable dealer such as Crucial.com or, uh, or Kingston. Um, and, um, and then you know, take advantage of this dual inline issue in the event that uh, your motherboard is capable of that. Um, and finally, I think one of the things that I, that I always like to point out is um, <coughs> you know, go for at least half a gig of RAM if you're going to run Windows XP. The forthcoming uh, Windows Vista, which is a, 
uh, the, you know, the replacement for Windows XP, and I'm actually writing a book about it right now. You know, they're basically saying you need at least a gig of RAM to run this operating system. And uh, thus far, I've uh, found that a gig, you know, I have a gig and a half in my test machine, and it's showing you know, a good performance on this, on this particular uh, uh, PC. I think that as things progress, the more RAM you can get in your system, the better. I would say, don't even if you're buying today, don't even think about 512. Go to a gigabyte if your system can handle yeah. it, because then you can do all of the things that uh, people are doing these days, like photo editing, creating your own home videos on your system. Yeah. It just the more memory that you have, the better. And and things like photograph, photography, and video take a lot of memory as overhead. Your system itself may not, but things like that that really have to keep a lot of bits in the air all the time really require a lot. Right. Any uh, parting thoughts? Yeah, I'm glad that you're writing another book because it means an entirely new book that you can pimp in every episode. <laughs> but and remember, my first book, of course, is The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Span, Spyware, and Viruses. And it's still for sale. It's actually doing really well. Oops, that's the back of the book. This is the front of the book. That's the back of the book. This is the front of the book. Um, it's it's compelling doing... television. <laughs> it's doing really well, actually. It's, I've sold uh, something about 1,000 copies a week, which I'm pretty pleased about. Um, but yeah, the new book will be out uh, in conjunction with Windows Vista, which launches in January 2007 as of this taping, which is uh, in April 2006. So don't believe it. Yeah, Microsoft may still push it again. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, that's it for this episode of uh, Lab Rats. Um, for Biff, Boo, I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carabas. We'll see you next time. Thanks for... Uh, oh, wait a second. No, labrats.tv. Email us. Feedback at labrats.tv. Okay, that's it. Are we done? <laughs> We're done. <laughs> All right. Thanks for downloading. Bye bye. Are you ready? leave it on the main drive or put Andy on there or something. Whatever works. I got that. Actually, those were good sticks of RAM. <laughs> yeah.